I'm at a stage right now between creating the electrical schematic and then doing the PCB layout. The stage right in between is where I go through the electronic parts that I have so that it comes in handy to decide exactly what is required in my bill of materials and most importantly, what parts I need to buy. Now, I also use this time to kind of take stock of what I have and to see where are the little inefficiency. Now, I admit that I do get lazy, so maybe I can afford to do it about once a year for my own personal home lab. So last year, I shared how I transferred all my parts into transparent Ziploc bags with sequentially labeled numbers that can be referenced through a simple Google spreadsheet. So in the Google spreadsheet, really, it's a bunch of columns where I have the quantity remaining, the component, the manufacturer part number, and also the project name and description. Something really, really simple, just a long list of parts that I have. So this kind of very simple spreadsheet, which was my first version of inventory system for my home lab worked really well until I needed to search the parts and then I needed to connect them with the project parts and then create bill of materials. And then I discovered parts box, which takes care of uh, inventory and the ordering. And recently, if you look at the pricing, they have started offering a free single user plan for hobbies and makers with a much reduced set of features. And when I looked at it, this was perfect for my use case. So in today's video, I want to share how I transferred from my spreadsheet system to parts box, especially in terms of the parts list, the storage, as well as linking these parts to the individual projects. The first step in doing the transfer from an existing spreadsheet to parts box is to look at the entire list of electronics parts. Now, these parts can be typically like, you know, resistors, capacitors, connectors, or even integrated chips that kind of get used up while we do either prototyping or small scale soldering and assembly. So like I shared last year, you can call them disposables, but as Wolfgang correctly pointed out, the word consumable is a more appropriate one because you don't really throw them away, but you consume them in our projects and eventually replace them. After we create an account on parts box and login, we will see these tabs above. So I'll be focusing on the parts tab for now. As you can see, I already have some parts here because I've transferred them from my spreadsheet to parts box. If you go to the gear icon right here, we can arrange these columns as well. For example, I have decided to put the number of stock, the manufacturer, the manufacturer part number, and exactly where I am storing it. Now, let's say I I would also like to display the projects. Yep, it is there. So used in project and add column. Let's see, they have added it here. Can I move it? Yep, using this arrow. And maybe I can also adjust the column width a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy. So let me save. And here you will see that I am using five of them in project cactus or even two projects. This uh, resistor 080510 k resistor is being used in two projects. Let's look at an individual part that I've already included. For example, this LED. And one really, really cool feature that Partbox has is this concept of ID anything. So it has this alphanumeric number or even a QR code. And the concept of ID anything is they can be printed on a label or attached to anything. Now, the next important task in parts box is to definitely create the parts. And in parts box, there are three ways of creating it. So let's try something like this, which is a local part. And for this, uh, let me go back to the spreadsheet and maybe I'll try to put in this part, which is a resistor of size 060347 k Oh, as you can see, I do not have any other information about this part, neither the manufacturer number, the manufacturer where I bought it from, nothing. Probably it was just handed down to me by some other person. So nevertheless, I will just take this uh, stock reference that I created and I'm just gonna put it my number. Footprint will be 0603 and description can simply be resistor 0603 47 k ohms. 
So manufacturer and NPM is something I wish I had, but I don't. And after creating, you can simply jump to created part or add stock. So I'll go to add stock. This is the most common option that I choose when adding a new part. So create. So part is created and this is how it looks like. And from my spreadsheet, it seems like I have 19 of them. So I'm going to put in 19 and yep, I do not have any price. So I'm just going to put in no price and then next. And this is an interesting thing. We can put in the location. So for me, I have it in box A, zip lock number 48. So let me search for it. Box A dash 48 and it is currently empty. And I'm just going to press next. And yep, I do not have any comments and add stock. So next one, why don't we try to create a linked part, which is very interesting. It is a capacitor, ceramic capacitor, 0805 size and 10 microfarad. So thankfully, I do have the part number here. And this is where I feel the power of parts box lies. So I can simply paste the manufacturer part number and try to match it. Now, because my part number was complete, it matched exactly to the part I required. Now, let's say you do not have the entire part number. You can match it partially and you'll have many, many options to choose from. So I'll just put it back because I have the exact part number. So after this, we can basically do the same thing, add stock, but notice how much more information there is because this part number is shared with other users. So I'm going to create the part, part created, and my quantity for this is 50. So I'm going to add in 50 and the box that I'm using is 30. So let's search for box A-30, which is currently empty. Next and no comments, add stock. The last type of part is called a meta part, which is a generic part that contains other parts that are exchangeable with each other. So I'm going to use this part, which is a resistor. As you can see, I have a couple of part numbers here. So let me create a meta part and I'm going to give this uh, the same stock reference. Footprint is 0805 and description will be resistor 0805 470 ohms. So let me jump to created part and see what happens. So now in the created part, we can add equivalent substitutes. So let me click that. So here you see it will ask for a part among the list. Now, since I do not have that created, let me go back to created and then I will add a linked part. Now, this is where let me take the first uh, manufacturer part number and I'll put in match. Yep, I found an exact match. Maybe I'll try to add a stock. Well, this is a tricky part. I don't really know which part number has what. So I tell you what, I'll just um, assume that it is 40 and 100. So let me create uh, say 40 of them next. And it is in box 33. So box A, uh, Ziploc number 33, which is empty as of now. Next. And that's it. So let me create the second linked part, which in this case is the second part number. So one is by Vichy and then the other one is by Walson Tech Company. So let me try to find this part. All right, so I found one. Okay, create part and the quantity will be 100. And yep, the box will be 33, which is the same as the previous one. So I'm just going to add next and add stock. So now when I come back to the stock, let me search by this stock reference. So I can just put it in the search bar here. Yep, so it's this one. And this is a meta part number. And this is where I can start adding the part. So obviously I'm gonna search by the first one, All right? Add, and let's add the second one. Add part, All right, add. And yep, I have just created a meta part number which can have exchangeable parts. So it doesn't really matter whether I use this manufacturer part number of this one because both of them are 0805 resistors with 470 ohms. So when I come back to my parts list, let me just clear the search. When I come back to my parts list, you can see that all the parts are here. But of course, this one is a meta parts list consisting of two individual parts. So the next cool thing about parts box is that we can get really, really precise about where to locate that exact part. So whether 
whether we are using, you know, the simple Ziploc bags, which is kind of of an 1D array concept, or we are using this kind of drawers, which has a 2D uh, location uh, numbering, or even a bigger warehouse kind of system, which is possibly a 3D numbering system. All kinds of options are available with parts box. And this is where I think the concept of storage comes in really, really handy. In parts box, the storage is a second tab. And here you can see that I have already created a lot of the storage uh, items. And each of this item actually corresponds to my Ziploc bag. So hence, when we want to create a box, or a storage, we can have a single storage, which I don't think most of us will have, but there is a concept of row, which I would like to think as 1D. And then there's a concept of grid, which is 2D, and then there is 3D. So let's create a row. For me, I have not created for box B, so I'll create for box B, and it is definitely numbers. And in this case, it is starting from 101 to 200. Once created, storage locations cannot be deleted, but they can be archived. So let me create it. And there you see after box A, right, um, I will probably have to show all 200. There you see I have box B with all the individual Ziploc bags labeled as numbers. So now that we have a list of all the electronic parts and also the list of locations on where to find them, I think the next exciting part is to connect them up with project and potentially with the bill of materials. So if we come back to parts box, once again, the third tab will be labeled as projects. And here I have already created some projects, uh, but really creating projects is very easy, as easy as putting the name and the description. So I want to go back to this meta part that I created. Let me label it as green because I transferred it to part box. And there are a couple of uh, MPN manufacturer part number. But see here, I have used it in three projects and I have so many project reference designators. This is exactly where the spreadsheet becomes a little bit cumbersome. So I'm going to go back to parts box and add for project cactus, which is R6, project cactus. I can go to bill of materials here and add a part entry. So I'm going to search by the meta part. So yep, it has added. And now I can expand this part and write the quantity name and the designator. As you saw that I only used it once and the designator is R6. So one name is just, um, I think I'll just leave it blank and designator is R6. So let me save that. And similarly, I have it as part of palm, which is R123. So let me go to palm and add a bomb part, add the meta part, and I can expand it. And there are three of them. And I can say R1, R2, R3. Now here's a cool thing. Notice what happens when I have a sequentially ordered or sequentially increasing part number. So let me save it. And here it will simply say R1 to R3. And the last one is pine. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go to pine, add part entry, and I will add the quantity as six. Let me just copy all the designators and separate them by comma and save. And there you see, they have actually recognized R6 to R8 is uh, increasing sequentially. Now here's the cool part. Now when I search by this part in my parts list, this is the first one, it will say that I have it as part of three projects and project number one, which is cactus, it's used one time, in palm it's three time and in pine, it is used six times. And of course, when I expand the part, it also says exactly the part numbers used in project is right here. And of course, the location is also stated. So I'm pretty happy with the transfer I made from the spreadsheet system to the parts box system. As you can see, I only explored these three features, which is the parts, the storage, and the projects. Now I am really excited to explore two more features. The first one is purchasing, but the feature that I'm very excited to try happens to be under import project. And here you can upload a bomb file generated from a CAD program. And if we are using KiCad, there are instructions for KiCad as well. 
So having a good parts list system is crucial to creating the PCB layout, I feel, because it makes it a lot clearer on what parts we can reuse from the ones we already have. Now from a home lab situation, this is pretty fun. You know, we can try out new systems, but if we are looking at something larger scale, there are bigger implications such as human errors or even pricing and costing. For example, I came across in the book Elon Musk by Ashley Vance. If we search by bill of materials, we will find a couple of quotes. And these are very interesting. The first one said that no one liked using the company's software that tracked the bill of materials. This is in the case of Tesla. So some people used it, some didn't and they would take the cost of a part from prototype and then estimate how much of a discount they expected. So you can see that the bill of materials has a direct uh, impact on the pricing. The second one is also very interesting. In this case, the employees were required to meet at 7 a.m. every Thursday for a bill of materials updates and they had to know the price of every part and uh, at first the motor apparently costed twice as much and uh, Elon Musk wanted it half by a few months. So that was uh, pretty interesting to know, just an example on how bill of materials and inventory part list is tightly coupled with the entire logistics system, manufacturing system, uh, ending up with the cost and pricing. So I would love to get your comments on this. What is your biggest challenge in using an electronic parts inventory system, such as a part box, spreadsheet, or whatever you are using? So I hope you learned something out of this. And if you want, uh, give a parts box a try, if it is for your home lab or even for your organization and team at work. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.